G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some of the more surprising grand final matchups that we've seen over the last 10 or 20 years or so. So the topic for today's video was inspired by Riley Burke, who posted this question on the last Drew Footy show on Drewzy's channel. He asked, is this the most unpredictable grand final matchup we've seen in over a decade? Now, what does that mean? Basically, it more or less means, is this the most unexpected grand final when you look at where two teams are at the start? of a given year for those teams to end up playing each other in the grand final is that the most surprising matchup over the last 10 years so i guess you could sort of frame it and look at the two contending teams in this year's grand final last year they weren't really much chopper at least only one of them was actually in the final so you could definitely make the argument this was a pretty hard to predict grand final matchup at the start of this season. Now, in terms of Melbourne, they finished ninth last year and 17th the season before that, whereas the Bulldogs finished seventh two years in a row. So I guess the Bulldogs being around the mark is a little bit less surprising than Melbourne, who are coming from a little bit further back. I mean, it definitely is surprising in some senses for both of these teams to make it. I'm sure most people at the start of the year would have thought, you know, teams like Richmond, Geelong and Brisbane or even Port Adelaide were more likely to be right in the mix for the grand final. All of those teams to miss and both of these teams to make it is relatively surprising, but you also have to consider the Demons did make a prelim back in 2018 and when the arse fell out of them in 2019, they fell to the you know, bottom two of the ladder. The point being they've sort of proven they've got the established quality on their list. And I think when you make a sort of list assessment for where Melbourne were at at the start of the year, I think most people would have conceded that they had, you know, some elite talent in that midfield sort of ready to blossom like Petrarca and Clayton Oliver to begin with. It's not a massive surprise that this side came on in the way it did. Maybe it's just a little bit surprising how quickly it happened. And in terms of the Bulldogs, they've been playing finals for the last two years and of course won the flag five years ago as well. So I would say it's a surprise Surprising grand final matchup, but overall not that shocking on the whole. And we're going to go through some grand finals over the last 20 years that I think you could argue are, you know, just as shocking or perhaps even more so. On the Drew Footy Show, I did mention the Eagles versus Collingwood grand final in 2018 as it being quite surprising. And that is the first matchup I'll discuss. That was actually 8th versus 13th from the previous season. The Eagles had made the grand final in 2015, so three years prior to that, and then finished 6th and 8th in the years following. But if you remember, the Eagles were trending you know, in the wrong direction down the ladder. They looked pretty hopeless at times during 2017. And many people in the media, in particular Robert Wall, thought they were going to be a genuine chance for the wooden spoon that year. So for them to make the grand final was quite surprising. And that's on the one hand, but on the other hand, Collingwood had also spent three years where they'd finished 13th, 12th, and 12th, really languishing under Nathan Buckley. Not a lot of people could see, you know, where the light at the end of the tunnel was going to come. I'm sure even the most optimistic Collingwood fans would have been absolutely shocked to see them make the grand final. And so you've got two teams here that no one really predicted would be in the mix to even make the grand final. So not only was this an incredible matchup at the start of that season, but even in prelim week, Collingwood had to overcome this Richmond side that had gone 18 and 4 and certainly had a proven track record of tearing teams apart in big finals. So for me, I definitely think that was one grand final matchup that was probably more surprising, all things considered. It's probably also worth mentioning the previous season to that Adelaide versus Richmond in the 2017 grand final. That was between 5th and 13. On the Adelaide side of things, probably wasn't a massive shock. They'd finished uh, seventh two years before and then fifth the year before but there was a strong resilience in that Adelaide side that overcome a lot of adversity both on field with Patrick Dangerfield their best player leaving at the end of 2015 and then of course their coach Phil Walsh tragically being murdered as well so a lot of reasons for Adelaide to crumble and they didn't they got better and they made the grand final but definitely the more surprising team out of this matchup was Richmond because at times they looked like they were on the brink of catastrophe the year before 2017 they had three elimination finals exits in a row and then in 2016 they've slumped to 13th I think it was with an 8 and 14 record there was a lot of talk about Hardwick being sacked they stuck fat with him and of course you know it's it's just incredible to think what Richmond became that year very very few people would have picked Richmond to win the grand final that year let alone win it in emphatic fashion and it's pretty incredible what that Richmond team from 2016 would become over the next five years. While we're on a bit of a roll here, let's go a little bit back further to 2007, Geelong versus Port Adelaide. Geelong had finished 10th the year previous and Port Adelaide had finished 12th. So in terms of raw ladder positions, this was an extremely surprising grand final matchup. But when you do get a little deeper, it's in fairness to Geelong, they had made a prelim 
two years previous to that and had made a semi-final in 2005 as well. And we were just starting to see this team of Ablett, Bartel, Johnson, etc. start to mature and become, you know, the dynasty team that they would become. By contrast, Port Adelaide had, of course, won the flag in 2004 and had sort of faltered after that, finishing 8th and then 12th. They were very much a mature side, sort of, you know, hanging on for one last crack at the title with a lot of older bodies in that team. And whereas Geelong, by contrast, was a team starting to make a name for themselves at the highest level. So while the latter positions would suggest a very surprising grand final, there's certainly logic to these sides meeting in the grand final. And as we know, this would be the game that would propel the Cats onto a dynasty and it would consign Port Adelaide to years of misery and they would make the bottom four the year after this game. One more grand final matchup that you could argue was very surprising would be back in 2000, the last time Melbourne made a grand final against the Essendon Footy Club. On the Essendon side of things, this was no surprise. They were a great team. They'd finished 18 and four and top spot the year previous. And of course in 2000 would go through as one of the most dominant premiership teams ever. Melbourne are the surprising aspect of this because the previous season they finished 14th, which was third last back then. In 2000, they went 14 and eight to finish third, which is pretty bizarre. If you finish 14 and eight these days, you finish fifth, sixth, seventh, but they upset the Blues in week one before beating the Roos in the prelim to make a surprising grand final matchup against Essendon. Doing a little bit of digging, uh, Melbourne were a very strange team back then, pretty much jumping in and out of the eight every second season. In 1998, they finished fourth. The next year, they finished 14th. In 2000, they finished runner-up. The following year, they finished 11th. In 2002, they would finish 6th. In 2003, they would finish 13th before jumping back up to 5th in 2004. That is absolutely ludicrous. And you can certainly draw some parallels with this current team after making the prelim in 2018, finished second last in 2019, only to jump up to 9th, and now look like the best team in the competition. And they certainly won the minor premiership anyway. So that is five grand final matchups that looking back in history were quite surprising. It's quite interesting to see how many teams can really jump out of the blue and start a premiership dynasty, let alone just make a grand final. As a little fun end to this video, I guess we can consider who are some candidates for next year's shock grand final. I mean, we could have the same grand final matchup again. Personally, I feel like Melbourne and the Bulldogs with their list profile are set up for a long period of success. But like I just said, Melbourne have a history of jumping up and down the ladder and frankly, so do the Bulldogs. You know, they've won the this could potentially be their second flag in five years and they haven't made the top four in that entire period so just for fun we'll look at some strange candidates i think you can probably rule out the main heavy hitters in geelong brisbane port adelaide even richmond these are going to be teams that are relatively written off and i would probably be looking at gws and st hilda as the biggest candidates to make the grand final in a shocking fashion a common thread between a lot of the teams that i just went through is that they made the grand final after a poor season but then a couple of years before that they were actually very decent well in 2020 obviously St Kilda won a final they've got a good young up-and-coming team and GWS made the grand final in 2019 and won a final this year as well so even though both teams are not really overly highly rated I think in particularly in GWS's case they've got enough talent to go pretty deep in finals and you can certainly argue that for the Saints as well I could see them sort of bouncing back into the finals next year I'm not saying GWS versus St Kilda is my prediction I'm just saying if you look at the logic of the teams that sort of bounced into the grand finals unexpectedly the profile kind of matches the GWS or St Kilda as well but anyway guys let me know in the comments what you think about the games that I've brought up and also you know maybe your own shocking prediction for next year's grand final why not it's a bit of fun True Footy Live will be going ahead twice over the next week we're only seven days until the AFL grand final but we're going to be doing the Brownlow medal tomorrow and then join us live for the grand final as well in seven days time. Thanks so much for the support lately. Really appreciate you all. Look forward to hearing from you in the comments. And as always, I'll see you guys very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.